you are still a badass birthing mama you still brought a baby earth side you are a kick-ass woman your birth does not define you and your birth story is still powerful because it is yours and Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. It is your girl Brittany Jade and welcome back to another Mama Mondays video. I'm so excited to be coming at you guys today with my top tips to have a successful home birth. And I'm so excited to be sharing these tips with you guys today because it's really near and dear to my heart. I feel like I get a ton of questions on how the heck I did a home birth, what I did to prepare for a home birth, and how I had like such a successful labor and delivery. And so I thought that I would compile some of the things that I did leading up to my labor and delivery here at home so that I could share it with you guys. And a little bit about me, if you're new here, my name is Brittany Jade. I've got three children. My oldest two kids, I did have regular hospital births with an epidural, not pain free at all whatsoever. I had no education at all about like the even possibility of home birth or what that entailed or like midwives, doulas, any of that. I was so uneducated and just kind of misguided in the birth department. I just kind of thought when you had a baby, you go to the hospital you're in pain, they want you to be quiet, you get the epidural, and that is it. So with my youngest son, TJ, who's three and a half, oh, actually he's four months old this month, I did a lot of research after I had my daughter because it was somewhat of a traumatic birth experience in the hospital for me, and I knew where I lived right now. I didn't want to give birth in the hospital that I worked at because I actually live on a very small island. There's only one hospital system here, and I work for that hospital system, so I just didn't want to give birth where I worked, uh, and there's like a long backstory behind it, but I'll just leave it at that. So that is what motivated me to look into different birthing options, and then next hospital is not for like 35 minutes away so I was kind of weary about that and there's a ferry between me and the other hospital which is also like you know an hour away give or take so it was like okay well I'm gonna have the baby at home that's kind of where my frame of thought was in the beginning but ultimately I did go with a midwife and a doula and I did end up having my third son here at home so that's just a little bit of backstory about me. If you guys are not familiar with me, I did have my labor and delivery vlog up on this channel. I'll have that linked up in the cards for you guys as well as in the description box down below if you're interested in seeing that. It's really, really powerful and I just love that video here on my channel. So yeah, go ahead and check that out if you have any questions about how I actually went through the process of labor and delivery. Before I get into these tips on how to have a successful home birth, I do want to give just a little bit of a disclaimer because I know that this topic is so touchy and I don't want the title of this video to be insensitive. I know that there's actually no like successful way to have a home birth because we're not in control of like what happens with our bodies. We can't plan everything to a T. Obviously, I'm not a medical professional. I'm not a nurse. I have only had one home birth. I've had three births vaginally, but I've only had one home birth, one drug-free birth, and all of my births had no complications, but I'm not a doctor, and obviously, you know, if you're somebody who's attempted to have a home birth and have had to transfer for whatever reason because of something that happened within your body, like, I don't want you to feel like this video is like if you did all of these things and you still weren't able to have a home birth that you didn't have a successful birth because every single birth is successful no matter how you birth, whether you have a vaginal birth, whether you have a cesarean birth, whether you have a home birth, whether you have a transfer to hospital birth, whether you know you have an emergency cesarean, whatever the circumstances is surrounding your birth and your birth story, it is so important and it is so special to you and your baby or whatever the outcome was of that birth is your story and it's a part of you and it is so powerful and it is so important. So I don't want you to get bogged down thinking anything less of yourself if you weren't successful at having a home birth and I guess successful is not even the right word, but if you weren't able to have a home birth or if you plan to have a home birth and that's just not how things worked out or if you had to have a transfer or even if you've never even thought of having a home birth before and you had a different birth plan in mind and it didn't go to plan, that is still okay. So I just want to put that disclaimer out there. I don't want anybody like thinking negatively or thinking that I'm, you know, down talking people that weren't 
actually able to have the birth that they necessarily wanted because ultimately even if you prepare wholeheartedly 100% you just never know what's going to happen and that is the beauty of birth it just it takes control and no matter what you just have to roll with the punches and kind of go with the flow of things and yeah so I just wanted to put that out there so I have three tips here for you guys and actually I have four tips so the very first tip that I have is to number one be positive and I I say that like not like oh this is gonna be so positive like I'm just going to push this baby out in 20 minutes and everything is gonna go good I just mean to like have like a positive frame of mind and to think about your birth in a positive manner I know that sometimes our minds can be so overtaken by fear that sometimes we scare ourselves out of our natural ability to birth a baby and as women we were born to do this we were made to do this our bodies can birth children that's what they were made for and I just I think that today in today's society and in the media and everything there's so much fear surrounding birth and whenever you watch something on like the movies with someone giving birth it's always like screaming and chaos and like you just you you think that the woman is in so much pain and it just seems really scary and it can be really fearful and that's how I always viewed birth as just like a really painful scary type thing nothing that I could have control over or have a positive outlook on just that something I wanted to like hurry up get as much drugs in my system as possible and get it over with and that's okay if you think that but if you want to have a home birth you're gonna have to change your perceptions on birth and ways that I did that was I locked I watched a lot of birth vlogs here on YouTube like natural home birth vlogs I watched a lot of documentaries on birth um, the I think it's called the business of being born or something like that is a really good documentary on home births I'll try and find that information to have that link down in the description box for you guys if you want to check that out but I really just tried to change my perception on birth as a whole and I tried to not focus on the negative and the fear but to be positive all around on just how I viewed what my home birth would be like and that is my number one tip and I tell everyone that like if you want to have a home birth you have to be positive around what a home birth is going to look like and what a home birth is going to be for you and you have to go into it not necessarily without any fear but you can't focus so much on the fear that it overpowers your positive mind frame on giving birth if that makes sense so my number two tip is to prepare yourself mentally and again this is kind of along the lines of being positive but a little bit deeper so some of the things that I did to prepare myself mentally I hired a doula and my doula actually gave me positive birthing affirmation cards and she had them just on sheets of like really pretty cardstock with like uh, little images and things like that and it had really neat like birthing quotes and positive birthing affirmations and they were like magnets that I could stick on my refrigerator and every single day I just had these birthing affirmations like my body was made to do this my body was made to birth my baby I am strong I am resilient I am going to have a positive birth story and I had these on my refrigerator I had them in my bedroom I had them in my car I had them at at my desk at work I would like change out my positive birth affirmation every week and it was really important to me to constantly remind myself of these things I think that the power of tongue is so powerful and how it relates to our minds and what we think we are what we think and we are what we tell ourselves and so birthing affirmations are great another thing that I did was I did a lot of yoga and meditation and like deep breathing techniques I did focus on hypno babies and I think that that is so powerful as well because deep breathing and meditation and hypno babies is going to help you when you're actually in the phase of labor and labor pains something that my doula told me was that um, and my midwife as well was when it comes to contractions your body yes that they are painful I'm not gonna lie and say that they weren't painful but your body is only gonna make them it's gonna gradually increase and it's only gonna get so painful your body is not going to kill you with pain while you're in labor like contractions are only going to get to a certain level and that's it so what the hypno babies and the meditation and yoga and deep breathing did for me was they gave me a t they gave me a technique to how to approach labor pains when they arose so I had a technique like I knew to go to my deep breathing which really relaxed my body relax my muscles help my baby come down the birthing canal and I feel like this really helped me in those times where I didn't tense up so much 
and like get afraid of the pain because I had those techniques that I had been practicing my entire pregnancy in the back of my mind. And you'll actually see a little bit of that in my birthing vlog. If you haven't seen it already, again, I'll have that linked. Go and check it out. Definitely did listen to a lot of meditation on my birthing ball when I was in active labor, and that helped me through the pain so much. Honestly, I didn't even think that I was as far along in labor as I was because I was like, okay, I'm waiting for this pain to get so intense, but I'm breathing through it and it just wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. Tip number three is to prepare your space. And what I mean by that is to prepare where you think you're going to give birth. Now, I have a really funny story with that because I'm actually in the room where I thought I would give birth. And this is my son's nursery. We had the birthing pool set up in the corner over there. And I had his closet back there filled with all of my birthing kit supplies, like my towels, my chucks pads, um, flashlights, gloves, plastic bags, pretty much everything was all in the closet, like ready to go. And I had the the pool all set up and we had the hose and everything was set up in here believe it or not I actually didn't even end up giving birth in here because my labor was ended up being so fast I gave birth in my kids bathroom down the hall in the bathtub I didn't even have the water birth that I planned for but I will say it did make me feel so much more comfortable to have my space totally prepared so you want to make sure that you have a birthing kit prepared and that's going to include like your towels, your postpartum essentials, anything that you need. I do have a birthing kit video and again, I'll have that linked up in the cards for you guys or down below. It's in my birthing playlist as well, my birthing and pregnancy playlist here on YouTube. So if you have any questions or like ideas on what exactly goes into a birth kit, I, I already have that video made so you can definitely go and check that out. But just having that ready to go made me feel so much more prepared and it just kind of gave me like an ease like okay I know what, where I'm going to go when I actually fall into labor and that is so important to have. And also you want to make sure that you have like your surrounding setup. So I knew that I was going to want like meditation music and like candles going, aromatherapy. So I had like candles throughout my house. I had, um, my husband had the loudspeaker on with like music and we had like a portable speaker. I had my essential oil diffuser going and stuff like that. I also wanted to make sure that everybody that came to my birth was comfortable. So when I started going into early labor, I already had like snacks and food that I knew I wanted to have out. So me and my mom actually prepared like a chick cuttery board. I know I'm not saying that right, but like fruits, nuts, cheese, and all that stuff like out on the table for my midwife and doula because I wasn't sure how long I was going to be in labor. Come to find out, I didn't even need any of that because they were only here for less than like two hours or something. So I just wanted to make sure that my space was peaceful. My space was something that I had set up and planned ahead of time because I just felt really comforted knowing that I would have all of my comforts right at my disposal when I went into labor. So preparing your space is a definitely a must in um, my opinion. And my fourth and final tip for having a successful home birth is to prepare yourself with a team. And what I mean by prepare yourself with a team is to prepare yourself with a supportive like group of people. And this can include obviously getting a midwife if that's something that you are doing. Um, I know that there are people out in the natural home birth world that have done like unassisted births. I didn't really feel comfortable with that. I really needed like a medical professional available. Uh, so definitely finding midwives that I loved was really important and that supported my vision in my birth. That was a really key tool. They actually gave me a lot of support and they gave me a lot of information and they just really supported my decision to do this and to do it at home and that was great. I also hired a doula and I talk about this in another video I think but a doula is actually a birthing support person. They're not a medical professional but there's somebody who is there who's not like your spouse or your mom or something that can help you when you're going through the pains of labor and delivery and they've attended tons of labor and deliveries before so they know different pain techniques they can help you stay calm they can help your partner stay calm and your family members and my doula was such an important person in my team she came over to my house before I went into labor with my mom and my husband here and she even calmed their minds down because if there's no home birth history like in your family or anything a lot of people I think society kind of turns our head away from home births as 
they view it as not safe or dangerous or something like that and so my family definitely had those same feelings as well like wow I'm crazy to want to have a home birth and my doula just really calmed everybody's nerves down she was such a powerhouse in my birth and I love her so much and I was so so glad that I hired her it was such a good investment and I recommend getting a doula that you love and that you connect with to everyone I know um, who's planning on having a home birth because I just felt like having that support there was so important I mean she helped my husband be more supportive towards me like she just knew what to do and when to do it and how to keep us all calm and it's really funny because in my birth story I actually had my baby before my midwife even came because long story short I didn't know I was as far along in labor as I actually was so she kind of helped us all when I ended up giving birth before the midwife even made it and so it was just really awesome to have her there Anita if you're watching this I love you um, yeah so definitely having a doula is great and then making sure that you know you have like your spouse there or your partner um, or any family members that would make you feel comfortable I feel like a lot of times people feel pressured to maybe have people that they don't necessarily feel comfortable with around and if that's something if that's how you feel just don't feel ashamed or feel bad about saying hey I only want so and so to be present at the birth because they're going to make me this is going to make me stressed and I don't want to have all this stress you want to have like the most peaceful peaceful supportive people around you as humanly possible you don't want to have any negative energy around you you don't want to be around anybody that doesn't make you feel wholesome and secure and loved and safe that is so important having a great support system and a powerhouse team is really going to help you just feel more at ease and overall have a more successful home birth journey so those are my four tips that I have for you guys as far as having a successful home birth I hope that these tips helped you and I hope that if you're planning on having a home birth that you have the home birth that, that you envision for yourself and I hope that you have a beautiful birth story no matter what your birth story is I hope that you guys know and in your heart of hearts I'll go back to my disclaimer in the beginning that it doesn't matter what your birth story is it doesn't matter if you planned a home birth and you had some complications or some medical stuff came up and you had to be transferred to a hospital and have your baby there it doesn't matter if you planned on having a drug-free birth and you ended up having to have an epidural for whatever reason it doesn't matter if you planned on having a certain kind of birth and you ended up having an emergency cesarean you are still a badass birthing mama you still brought a baby earth side you are a kick-ass woman your birth does not define you and your birth story is still powerful because it is yours and I would love for everybody who's watching this video to just embrace their birth story no matter what it is because Mama life is hard and the birthing part is honestly the easiest part whatever it is because being in like the thick of parenting that's where the real work comes in and it is hard so I just want to extend my love to you all I just want to share a little bit of my story and just hope that I can give you guys some encouraging words here and just know that no matter what your birth story is you are a badass mama and you are amazing and you are love and your birth story is so special and it is going to be cherished something that you cherish for the rest of your life so I hope that you guys enjoy this video if you did please make sure that you give it a thumbs up and please if you're new here I hope that you would consider hitting that subscribe button if you're not already and make sure that you hit the little bell notification so that you don't miss any of my upcoming videos that really supports my channel you guys and if y'all have any questions or any tips or feedback to leave anyone else please go ahead and do so in the comment section I would really love to get a conversation going surrounding home births and any other questions or situations or tips that you have for having a home birth I would love to talk about that with you guys in the comments so please make sure that you do that as well and I will catch you guys in the next video bye